everybody, Morgan with Event Answer here, and today I want to share with you how I put together this copper pipe arch. It's super simple and adds such a level of elegance to any kind of event. So follow along and I'll show you how I made it. The arch is comprised of half inch type M copper pipe, and I use five 10 foot sections as well as one five foot section of pipe from my hardware store to build the entire arch. Now when you get the pipes, there will probably be ink on the pipes. And so I use some paper towels and some nail polish remover, which has acetone in it to remove that ink. But I did find that there was some ink that wouldn't quite come off and it doesn't get the tarnishes out. So I went over all my pipes first with uh, the acetone based nail polish remover. And then I came back with some really fine steel wool. Now this is gonna clean off that really stubborn red ink or black ink and it's gonna clean up all the tarnishes and the marks off the copper pipe. This is the most critical step and probably the most time consuming out of this entire project because you want the copper pipe to be in its nicest, shiniest form. And once it's cleaned, you wanna seal the copper pipe uh, so it won't tarnish again because it will naturally patina. So if you want to keep this really shiny copper look, you're gonna to need to seal it with some clear lacquer after everything's been glued together. Once all the pipes were cleaned, I took a tape measure and permanent marker and measured out all the lengths of pipe that I would need to cut apart for the final arch. You can find the cut list in the description box below and I'll have a graphic here in just a moment showing you exactly what I'm cutting out of these pipes. You'll want to be sure to double check your measurements because the pipes that I purchased, even though they said they were 10 feet in length, they were not exactly 10 feet. There was a little bit of extra, a little bit short on some pipes, so make sure you're really watching your measurements. I'll be cutting all of my pipe using a tube cutter, and this small one is meant for metal projects about this size of pipe. And what it has is this little cutting wheel, and you clamp it down very gently on your pipe, and you just want it snug enough that it makes a slight impression on the pipe, and then you're gonna rotate your pipe around a couple times. You'll begin to see that in indentation. You'll give it a quarter turn and twist the pipe again. Now you don't wanna take your cut too fast or too aggressively because you can bend it, but just a quarter turn and rotating the pipe will cut this off nice and square and really accurately right on the mark. In total, there will be four six and a half foot pipes, three five foot pipes, eight six inch pipes, and four 12 inch pipes. And then you'll also need two end caps six 90 degree elbows, and eight T-fittings. Here are all the pieces laid out on the floor to make one of the leg assemblies. Now I decided to glue all the pieces together to make up the legs, and this is gonna give it more rigidity and strength, but I will leave all the horizontal pieces unglued to this for easy storage and transportation. I used CA glue in a thick formula to glue all of my pieces together. And I'm just gonna put a little bit on the inside of a fitting, taking it one joint at a time. And I'm just gonna nestle the pipe into it until it completely seats. And I wanna make sure everything's nice and square and pushed in tightly. So I'm gonna turn this around, this is the foot, and I'm gonna attach our six inch piece to that, making sure it has seated uh, completely. And then I'm adding the other T fitting. It's really important that all the fittings are square to each other. So I've got this laid on the floor and I'm gonna press on the fittings until there's no wobble between the two of these because this is what's gonna make sure the leg is square. So once I've assured that those are square and they've dried a moment, I'm gonna go ahead and add the other 12 inch piece and then I'm gonna glue on the cap to the end. So just a little bit of glue here on the inside and then I'm ready to start gluing on the legs. So you can see the six and a half foot pipes here going up and out of the top of the screen. On the other end of that, I've got the other two T fittings and the six inch pipe between it already on the other end so that I make sure that these pipes are in square to these fittings. Then I glued the top section of this leg together. So I've got the T fitting here and I'm attaching this to the top side of that six and a half foot pole that we just saw on the other side. I'm gonna glue in the other T fitting to the other six foot pole and the six inch piece between the two. Now you wanna make sure you push these in snugly and you square them up really tightly to make sure that everything remains square. And then I'm just gonna glue the top two six inch pieces on and that will complete one leg assembly. So I'm gonna repeat this on the other side and then I'll be ready to glue together all the horizontal pieces. 
For each five foot pole, I'm gonna be gluing down two of these 90 degree elbows on them. And I'm just gonna repeat the same steps I did before, putting glue on the inside of the fitting. Now the key here is I'm gonna rotate this around and put the second elbow on, but I have to make sure these elbows are facing the same direction and are square to each other, um, because if I glue them in cockeyed, this arch will not fit together. And this wraps up the gluing process. So at this point, you would want to clean all of the pipes one more time to get any fingerprints and oils off of them if you're planning to clear coat and varnish this. And now it's time to start assembling the arch. So I've come to this spot so you can see it all put together. And it's rather windy today, so I'm using sandbags to help anchor this arch because it can sway in the wind, especially with fabric on it. So I've got the sandbags on the bottom and then I'm just attaching my sheer white panels to the back upper pipe. I'm going for a tropical wedding altar vibe here. And this is honestly what I love about it being a double pipe uh, arch instead of just a single pipe because I can have the fabric on the back side and still attach florals on the front without interfering with each other. And I'm just adding these tropical arrangements using chenille stems to those horizontal six inch pipes, which are super convenient for attaching florals to. And that's all there is to setting up this arch. It traveled really easily in the back of my hatchback car and went together super quick. I hope you found today's project inspirational. This came together really quickly, and with just a few basic tools, you can add a lot of elegance to an event. So I hope that you'll give this a try. If you do, let me know in the comments below how it went for you. If you enjoyed today's video, give it a like. It lets me know that you've enjoyed the project and want to see some other things. Speaking of, I've got other projects, including builds, balloon tutorials, as well as Q&A sessions about event questions. So you can check out some of those over here. And until the next time, stay creative.